Hi. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, unsupervised learning-based approach for 3D phase reconstruction. Here is the problem statement. Uh, we have a monocular input image of a face, and from there we want to get the 3D model of the face uh, from the image. The 3D reconstruction should define uh, the geometry and skin reflectance of the face, the scene illumination in the scene, and the rigid pose. So overall, it describes the complete appearance of the face in 3D. Because of the ambiguities between the different channels uh, of this 3D reconstruction, as well as because of the monocular setting we are dealing with, uh, this problem is quite ill-posed and challenging to solve. Previous approaches have dealt with this problem in an optimization-based setting. Uh, they use analysis by synthesis to optimize for the best 3D reconstruction given an input image or video. These approaches can obtain high-quality reconstructions. However, because of the large number of unknowns and constraints, uh, they are, these optimization problems are quite costly. Uh, the objective uh, which these problems try to minimize is also non-convex, so these approaches uh, can get stuck in local minima in the absence of uh, some key point or landmark-based alignment. Recently, some learning-based approaches have been proposed. These approaches try to directly learn a regressor, which gives us uh, the 3D reconstruction from the input image. Because of this, these learning-based approaches are typically faster than the optimization-based ones. However, there is a lack of training data of input images and their corresponding 3D reconstructions. Because of this, these learning-based approaches either train on synthetic data, which limits their generalizability to uh, real-world images, or they train considering the optimization-based fits as the ground truth, which is also not correct. In this paper, we present model-based face autoencoder which integrates both the optimization-based and the learning-based approaches within a single framework. Doing so lets us exploit the advantages of both of these different paradigms. Our model-based space autoencoder lets us train unsupervised on real images, unlike any of the other learning-based approaches. Here is how our pipeline looks. We have an input image, and we want to obtain the reconstruction. The image first goes through a convolutional encoder, which gives us parameters of a low-dimensional parametric model. These parameters define the reconstruction. So once we have these parameters, we can compute the 3D reconstruction. They are also semantic, so we know how each of these parameters influence the 3D reconstruction. Uh, this is unlike the conventional autoencoders. Once we have the 3D model, the 3D reconstruction, this is passed through the image formation layer which projects it to the image plane and gives us a synthetically rendered image. This image formation model is known from computer graphics, and since we know the exact equations which govern this image formation, uh, it does not have any learnable parameters, and it's completely fixed throughout the training. Now, once we have the rendering of the face, we have a loss function which compares the input image and the rendered image in an autoencoder-style loss and uses this loss to train uh, our encoder. Now let's look at the network in a bit more detail. So the convolutional encoder is not our main contribution. In our experiments, we use either VGG face or AlexNet with a fully connected layer at the end, which uh, brings us to our parametric space. However, any CNN could be used uh, as the encoder. The encoder gives us the model parameters. As I said, they semantically define the reconstruction. Uh, these are the following parameters. So the first six parameters correspond to the rigid pose of the face in 3D, so these are the rotation and translation parameters. There are eight key parameters which define the global shape, the geometric deformations of the face. There are another 80 parameters which define the skin reflectance or the albedos of the face. So you can see that as we change the values of these parameters, the skin reflectance changes on the right. We have 64 parameters which control the expressions of the face. And finally, we have 27 parameters which define the scene illumination as coefficients of the spherical harmonic basis functions. So in total, this gives us 257 parameters using which we can compute this uh, 3D model of the face. Once we have computed this model, 
our image formation layer takes this, does a perspective transformation, and gives us a synthetic image of the same face. So we just saw that we can go from the parameters of the model to a rendering of the face. To train the network, we also need to do back propagation. Uh, this is possible because the decoder I presented is differentiable, which means that we can compute the gradients of the rendered image with respect to, with respect to the parameters of our model. The loss function now compares the input image and the rendered image. It has two components. The first term looks at the photometric alignment. Uh, this, uh, this is a dense photometric alignment which compares each vertex of the model to the corresponding pixel in the input image. And we additionally have some statistical regularizers on the parameters of the model which try to keep the reconstruction within the plausible space of faces. With such a loss function and the network, we train our data on more than 100,000 images uh, collected from four different data sets. Since we do not require any ground truth, these are just crops of faces with no corresponding annotations. Here are a few results on the test set. You see the input image, the final reconstruction overlaid on the input image, the geometry, reflectance, and illumination channels of the reconstruction. You can see that it works well on in the wild illumination settings for different expressions and even under slight occlusions by beard or strands of hair. We compare our approach to uh, the learning-based approach of uh, Richard Sanetal, who train on synthetic images. Unlike their approach, we can directly regress for colored illumination and skin reflectance. Uh, since they train on uh, synthetic images, we also show better generalizability to real uh, images. We also compare our approach to the high quality optimization based approach of uh, Garrido et al. We obtain similar quality results um, while being orders of magnitude faster than their approach. As I mentioned earlier, optimization based techniques uh, in the absence of landmark or key point based alignment between the model and the input image gets stuck uh, in local minima, which does not give plausible reconstructions. However, our method, even without any such uh, key point based alignment term, gives us good reconstructions. To conclude, we presented an unsupervised approach to train for 3D face reconstruction. This was made possible by an integration of an expert design computer graphics model within the network such that we could train the whole network end to end. And while we show this for the application of 3D face reconstruction, we believe that the ideas presented could very well be applicable to other problems. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? I have a question. How does this approach handle occlusions or maybe eyeglasses or something on top of the face? The eyebrows are modeled in the, uh, in the parametric model we have, so the skin reflectance handles that. Here is uh, an issue because it's not modeled in the, uh, in the parametric model, but uh, the photometric loss function we use is a bit robust, so it can handle occlusions to a certain extent, but strong occlusions are still an issue. I see. Any other questions? And you mentioned the same approach can be used for other reconstruction tasks, right? And uh, I think face is kind of domain where we can use a uh, kind of statistical, very rich model, right? And can, it, can this approach apply to other domains without much resource on, say, reflectance models? Uh, it's obviously easier if you have such a parametric statistical model, uh, but I think it could be possible for harder problems as well, for example, using contours as the cues to get the shape, uh, but I think in general it could be possible to even model the reflectance using such an approach. Okay, any other questions?
if there's no more questions, let's thank the speaker again and move on to the next presentation.